Strange but true stories, tales from the light side, the dark side, and the other side. I'm Steve White. We've all had those head-scratching moments, right? Those times when something happens and surely there's a logical, reasonable explanation for whatever just happened happening. We rack our brains for the answer, call up all of our scientific reasoning and that Rational reason eludes us at every turn. We're stuck with disbelief and perhaps a little bit of wonder at the strangeness of the world we inhabit. So it was for these two contributors to Strange But True. They shared their stories with us about their bizarre events. December 2007. I was living in Bristol, Rhode Island, which is a little town that sits on Narragansett Bay. I was training for a marathon at the time and was getting my daily miles in. I was running along Bayview Avenue, which in this flat, bayside town is about the only serious hill that a runner can get any uphill training. As I was clipping along, I noticed a wallet by the side of the road. I stopped, picked it up, and did a quick inventory of the contents to see if there was anything there. I noticed it had a good weight to it, and a lot of things the owner would want to have back, so I held on to it until I finished my run and could do a more extensive search and go through the process of returning it. You know us runners, never really wanting to break stride, jogging at the corner and all for the light to change. So I got moving again to finish out my miles for the day. When I got home, I found the wallet contained $126 in bills and around $2 in change, mostly pennies. There were also credit cards, a debit card, the ubiquitous store affinity rewards cards, and a few ID cards that indicated the wallet belonged to a 21-year-old female. The young lady's driver's license identified her hometown as Fort Collins, Colorado, and she was a student at the University of Hawaii, Manoa. I did a quick Google search and found a telephone number in Colorado. It was December 20th, and since she was a college student, I assumed she was home on break, so I decided to call her home in Fort Collins. And even if she wasn't home on break, I figured someone at that address would know where she could be found and point me in the direction to return it to her. Maybe she was visiting relatives in Rhode Island and I could just drop it off to her, or I could ship it to her. So I called the girl's home in Colorado, and as I learned a little later, the young lady's mother answered the phone. I explained my story about how I had been out running and came upon the wallet and I was wanting to return it to her, wherever she may be. She asked me again where I was calling from, and I told her that I was in Rhode Island and had found the wallet this morning. The mom seemed incredulous. She called her daughter to the phone, the one whose wallet I was holding in my hand, to figure out what was going on. When the young lady took the receiver, I told her my story again about finding her wallet in my little town of Bristol, Rhode Island. I told her where, on what street I found it, thinking maybe that would spark some memory of where she had lost it. She, too, was unwilling to accept my story as the truth. She said that she had lost her wallet a few days prior, but in Honolulu, right before she came back to Colorado for the Christmas break. It was not possible for the wallet to have found its way to some tiny town in Rhode Island. I admitted it did seem strange. I mean, even if you play devil's advocate and say somebody picked it up in Honolulu with the intent of keeping it, A, why hang on to it all the way across the country where there are a million trash receptacles between there and here, and B, nothing was taken from the wallet at all. I could hear her mother in the background angrily asking what on earth she was doing in Rhode Island without her knowledge to which I could hear the young lady's reply that she had not gone to Rhode Island, had never been to Rhode Island, and had only been in Honolulu the entire fall semester at UH. She told me she had never been east of Denver, as a matter of fact. The girl swore to me that she became aware of losing the wallet in Honolulu just before she left for Colorado for Christmas break, so how was it that I found her wallet over 5,000 miles away in Rhode Island? I told her I had lived in Rhode Island for more than 20 years and had never visited Hawaii. I could tell there was a lot of tension between the daughter and mother and a lot of disbelief as to what the truth of the story really was. Eventually, I confirmed the girl's address in Fort Collins, mailed it from Rhode Island the next day, and that was that. 
About a week later, I received a thank you card from the girl in which she expressed her gratitude for sending the entire wallet back with all of its contents, as well as her expressing again that it was impossible that I could have found the wallet in Rhode Island. And yet, I had. And that was truly that. I never heard another word from the girl, the mother, nor any sort of explanation of how I could have randomly found her wallet over 5,000 miles away from where she lost it in Honolulu. I too am at a loss about how I found this wallet in Rhode Island just days after it was lost in Honolulu. However, as the fates would have it, I am now living in suburban Honolulu. I moved here in 2014. If someone had told me at the time I found the wallet in 2007 that I would someday be living in Hawaii, I probably would have asked them what drug they were on. It's just so odd how life turns out sometimes. Or perhaps it's how the Matrix works. Something really strange happened to me last week. At the time of this production and recording would have been the last week in August in 2018. A little background. I grew up in the northern part of Arizona. I went to high school in a small town about an hour south of Flagstaff. I was in theater and had the lead in many of the plays we put on every year I was in high school. I moved to the southern part of the state when I went to college. I became a nurse, then moved to Washington State a few weeks ago, relocating to Bremerton, which is west of Seattle and about an hour ferry ride across the Puget Sound to Seattle and the famous Pike Place Market. Anyway, I'm in Bremerton, and I popped into a smoke shop to buy cigarettes. I know, I know, a healthcare professional smoking cigarettes. Trust me, not the strangest part of the story. I opened the door and walked in, and immediately I became lightheaded. Just a weird feeling came over me. I closed my eyes for a moment to regain my composure, and when I opened them, I saw this really beautiful young lady behind the counter. She was about my age, and she had this look of recognition on her face. Hey, she said in an excited voice. Mickey, how are you, man? Now, Mickey is my name, and I just looked at her for a moment and and thought, who is that? She is really acting like she knows me, and I do not recognize her at all. The face other than she was beautiful, didn't register with me, and the voice didn't bring back any memories. I slowly walked to the counter, searching my memory for any recollection of this person, and came up with nothing. I asked her for a pack of Marlboro 27s. She smiled and pulled the pack of cigarettes for me. I just kept thinking, who the hell is this, and how does she know my name? In the three weeks I had been here, I hadn't met a bunch of people, really. I mean, not like this, where we'd be on such a friendly basis, like we'd been friends for years. I tried to be friendly, so I smiled at her and asked her how her day was going, and she answered cheerfully, Great! She just kept looking at me, again with that surety of knowing me, not just in passing, but as if we went way back. I pulled my debit card from my wallet and slid it through the card reader. As it was processing, she asked if I was going to the high school reunion. Wow, I thought maybe she moved like I did from Arizona to Washington, but to make sure I asked her where she met. She looked at me funny and said, Here, in Bremerton. I replied, I'm sorry, I think you have me confused with someone else named Mickey. She just laughed and told me how funny I've always been and then continued on about how we dated in high school and how my mother died in 2008 and how sad that was, and then about all the plays we had been in and how I was always the male lead and she was always the female lead. Was this a Twilight Zone episode? All of that was true, except the dating in high school and the Bremerton part. My mother had died in 2008, and as I said before, I had been the lead in all the plays when I was in high school in Arizona. When I reaffirmed that she had mistaken me with someone else, that I grew up in Arizona, not here, she got this really scared look on her face and asked me to leave. I don't know what the hell that was. I have been searching for an answer ever since it happened. One thing is for certain, I will not be going back to that smoke shop.
This has been another strange but true stories submitted to us by viewers just like you. Anything unexplainable ever happened to you that you would like to share with us? Send us your story to strangebuttruestories2 at gmail.com. Let us know what you thought of these stories in the comments below. Subscribe if you haven't already, and sign up for notifications by clicking the bell in the upper right to know when the next video drops to the channel. Check out our website, and we also have merch. Go to teespring.com and search for Strange But True. There are some t-shirt and hoodie options available. More options on the way soon. And thanks for watching this video. I'm Steve White. Until next time.